everyone welcome back to our channel today we're going to be solving another physics 7c practice problem on wave interference called mellow at the concert remember if you find this video helpful please subscribe to our channel and leave a like your support helps a lot and we really appreciate the feedback okay here's the problem remember to pause the video and copy it so you can follow along a single eared alien named mellow is seated in an amphitheater there are two loudspeakers on the stage, each blaring the same frequency. Mello was furious because at her seat, she could hear no sound. After several minutes, she moved to the center of the auditorium and still heard absolutely nothing. However, while she walked from her original position to the center position, she heard a beautiful note at exactly 500 hertz. The questions are, during her review of the concert, she stated that one of the speakers was wired opposite from the other speaker. How did she know that the speaker was wired oppositely? Let's start with this question. Mello knows that these two speakers are wired oppositely. Let's see how she knows that. If we take a look at the path length between speaker A and speaker B, that's the distance the wave needs to travel, it's the same distance. So X1 and X2 are the same. So if we look at constructive or destructive interference, the equation is the G capital phi, and we want to look at the change in phi. So if we look at the change in phi, 2 pi times some specific time point of each period, t1 minus 1 over t2. We know that the periods should cancel out because it was given that they're the same frequency. And frequency and period are inversely related. Period equals 1 over the frequency. So this whole thing goes to 0. Next we have plus or minus 2 pi. So since we're going um, from the opposite direction, we do minus 2 pi x1 minus x2 over lambda. Okay, we also know that this is zero because their path lengths are the same from speaker A to the center and speaker B to the zero. So x1 minus x2 is zero. And then finally we have the change in their phase constants. So this is just our phi1 minus phi2. For this to be no sound, for us to have destructive interference, recall that delta phi has to be 2n plus 1 times pi. So our delta phi, small phi, the phase difference, equals pi, or 2n plus 1 pi. So this delta phi has to equal pi, which tells us that if these two are exactly out of phase by pi or by 2n two two plus 1 pi, that means they're wired opposite because 1 is off by exactly one phase of pi. Um, if they were not wired oppositely, this would be not 2n plus 1. It would be constructive interference. Or it could be wired slightly out of sync, in which case you wouldn't get either a multiple of pi or a multiple of 2 pi. But for this problem, they're wired opposite, and for destructive interference, the only way for there to be no sound here is for there to be destructive interference, which shows us that the value of delta phi, um, the change in their phase constant compared to each other, is a multiple of pi. Okay, let's work some more on the destructive and constructive interference. Part two says, during intermission, the audio technicians fixed the wiring so that the speakers were wired identically. The speakers were not moved and thus remained at their same locations. The second act featured a concert that was a sustained note at 250 hertz. Mello expectantly returned to her original seat for this was her favorite note. Which of the following occurred? Mello was seated at a destructive interference point and heard little or no sound. Mello was seated at a partially destructive constructive point and clearly heard sound. 
Mello was seated at a constructive interference point and heard a loud sound. Okay, so let's remember what the difference between each one is. As we said before, this is destructive. Destructive interference. Delta phi equals 2n pi is constructive and everything else is partial. Okay, so using that information, what do we know? Well, looking at Mello's position here, we know that x1 does not equal x2. So for part B, or for question two, x1 does not equal x2. So what do we know? We know the wavelength equals the velocity of the sound divided by the frequency. And they give us that the frequency is 250 hertz from each speaker. So that means we are getting 250 hertz. Oh. So our frequency in the original problem in part A was 500 hertz. In the new problem, we have a frequency of 250 hertz. And here this equals delta x, where delta x is zero. And here this equals delta x, where we don't know what it equals, but we know it's not zero. So what do we have for our equation of two pi delta x over lambda? Well, if we go and move Mello back to her original position, these two delta x's are the same. So we can replace the delta x with what we have here. So if we plug that in, we get negative 2 pi Vs, V of the sound, over 500 hertz, times, now we're going to plug in lambda, so this is 1 over, so delta x we plugged in for here, lambda we're going to plug in for here, over velocity of sound divided by 250 hertz. So if we multiply this out, the velocities of sound cancel, and we get the change in the delta V is negative 2 pi. 250 divided by 500 is 1 half. So divided by 2. So this gives us negative pi, which means she experiences destructive interference. So the answer was A. Mello was seated at a destructive interference point and heard little or no noise. So this was a bit of a more difficult problem because we had to use two equations to solve for delta x and for lambda to plug into our destructive, constructive interference um, equation. Okay, hopefully this video was helpful. If you liked it, please leave a like and please subscribe. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will do my best to get back to them. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye.